Hey, hey, everybody. It's January the 7th, and I have not done a pour in quite a while except for on some tiles, and I've had a lot of commissions that I did before the holidays. I still have some to do. I'm on an angel kick here, so I'm going to be doing a lot of angel paintings, but I'm also going to get back into the pouring. I actually want to experiment a, quite a bit with uh, resin and do some creative stuff with that. So there's going to be a whole lot of fun in 2020. I decided I would go back and do a basics for beginners video for those of you who uh, happen to just to discover me and would like to know, you know, what are my basic recipes and that kind of thing. If you want to start from scratch and you've never poured before, I wanted to make that video for you. Uh, there's so many acrylic pouring channels out there and uh, lots of different recipes and I try to keep mine really, really simple and just easy for people to remember. So I'm just going to go through and I'm going to do this step by step. There's not going to be much fast forwarding or anything like that because I want you to be able to learn how to do an acrylic pour from start to finish. So um, today I'm going to work with two 8x10 canvases. I'm going to do two different techniques. And the first thing you'll need is a surface. You can put down a plastic tablecloth. Uh, I have butcher paper under here. There, I have an Amazon link below all of my videos and in that link are hundreds of products that I use. And this is Jack Richardson Butcher Paper. It's a 50 foot roll by about three feet. And it lasts forever. And it is great for wiping things up and peeling paint and resin off of and all kinds of good stuff. And then another easy thing that I like to do is just put a puppy pad down. And you can get these in bulk on Amazon. You can get them from the pet store, you know, from Sam's. Walmart, wherever, dollar store. But when you buy them in bulk, you actually pay way less for them. But what happens is I can totally just fold this up and throw it away, or I can save the paint skins that drip off of my canvases, let them dry, and I can make jewelry from it. And I'll do another video later on on how to make jewelry. And I do have some that I did quite a while back if you want to search Sandra Lett jewelry you will find a couple of videos on that. But this whole video is going to be about just the basics on how to do an acrylic pour. If you have a small level in your house or maybe consider purchasing one at the dollar store or something, they're great to have because the key to any successful pour is number one, to have a flat surface. And traditionally, we will put push pins in the corners of the canvases. It doesn't have to be in the exact corners, it just needs to be somewhere in this area. And if you see there are wooden slots that are cut out of the wood right there. Sometimes if you push your pen in above the wooden slot it's a little bit easier to get in. Otherwise sometimes the wood is very hard and it's, it's a, a struggle to get the push pins in. So I recommend a small heavy duty 8 ounce hammer. I have one listed in my Amazon link below the video. I keep one of these around. They're great for getting those push pins in all the way because if they're not level your canvas will kind of teeter-totter and your paint will drift in whatever area that it's not lo level. So it's always a good idea to just check and make sure that your canvas is level. Okay. So the other things that you're going to need are, I use gloves because if you get these paints all over your hands, they can ruin a manicure, which I never have, and they uh, get into the cracks and crevices of your skin and everything else. So I just use gloves and then pull them off and dispose of them at the end. They're also great for when you're finished, you can pull it off and put it over the top of one of your cups that has paint in it that you haven't used everything and this will seal it airtight and keep that paint ready for your next pour. So that's a great way to cover cups of paint is with your gloves when you're finished. You'll need some craft sticks. 
You can get them at Walmart. Uh, you can get them in bulk on Amazon. You can get them at Dollar General. I usually get the bigger ones. There's also the typical popsicle stick size and you see the difference. The bigger ones are just easier for my hands to stir with. I have a little bit of arthritis and it, it just feels better when I'm using the bigger sticks, but you can most definitely use smaller sticks. Uh, so that's not an issue. You'll need, if you're starting small, you just need little small bathroom cups. These happen to be five ounce. You can even get the three ounce bathroom cups. You can also get in bulk from Walmart these little, uh, these are two and a half ounce cups. Um, I think these are two ounce cups as well and they have little lids that come with them. So you can get those in bulk if you want to and then cover your paints with the lids at the, at the end of the day. All right, the other thing you're gonna need is some water and I use a condiment bottle and I put water in my bottle up to about 90% of the bottle. I go about 90% and we add Floetrol as our pouring medium. I don't use glue and I don't use Liquitex pouring medium. I just use Floetrol. It is easy to use. It's latex based which means it's water based. I get it at Lowe's or Home Depot. It's about $14 for a gallon you're going to pay almost that much for a whole bottle, a whole gallon of glue anyway. Uh, glue is not always tried and true and sometimes will crack and I just typically use Floetrol. So my pouring medium is Floetrol. The reason we use pouring medium is to extend the drying time of the fluid art acrylic paint. Uh, it keeps it wet longer it extends it without having to add a bunch of water to your paint because when you add just water to your paint people say why can't I just add water it will break it down if you put too much water to the ratio of paint that you have so I use Floetrol and I do add 10 percent Floetrol to my bottle of water so there's 90 percent water and 10 percent Floetrol and this is what I'm going to add to my colors if I need it. I don't always need it, but if I do need it, this is what I have for my water mixture. So this, when you see this red bottle, that's my water with 10% Floetrol mixed into it. So what you do is you do a one-to-one -one ratio, usually, with your paints. I've got five colors I'm going to mix up for you. got a white it's Amsterdam white I'm not going to mix a lot of this I'm just going to put maybe about a tablespoon into my cup and therefore I'm going to add about a tablespoon of flow trough all right so now I have deco arts craft bottle paint so any craft bottle paint I'm going to just dump what's left in this bottle, which is about maybe an ounce of paint. This is a metallic. Again, I'm going to add one ounce of Floetrol. I do not measure, I just eyeball it. You want about the same amount of Floetrol that you have paint. Okay. The next one is Golden Fluid Acrylic and this is way more expensive and it's a liquid so it's highly pigmented. So what I do is I just put my, I'm going to put about an ounce and a half of Floetrol so it's kind of comparable to the other paints. Maybe I'll put about two ounces. And with Fluid Art paint like this, the acrylics that are like golden, they're highly pigmented. I'm just going to put a little bit in, like a little squirt. You don't see much of it. That's probably all I'm going to need. And then I've got tube paint. And um, let, me, let me use amethyst here, which is a Josanya paint. 
And then I'm going to use a Liquitex Basics Prism Violet. Amethyst and Prism Violet, okay? With two paint, you always need water added to it because two paint is thick. So I'm still going to put my paint in first. I'm just going to put it's about a tablespoon or so of this, which is, this is not super thick. It's a little, a little bit more fluid, actually. I'm going to put about the same amount of Floetrol in there. Also keep you some wet paper towels around so you can kind of wipe off mistakes and fingerprints and that kind of thing. And then the Liquitex Basics Prism Violet, it's going to be much thicker. I'm kind of towards the end of the tube. So it's really, it's thick. It's really thick, okay? I'm going to add about the same amount of Floetrol, if not just a little bit more, but you're always safe with a one-to-one -one ratio of paint to Floetrol, no matter what, except for maybe the golden fluid. And I have a hole in this cup. Uh, it's pouring out from underneath, so I'm just going to stick another cup underneath it. Sometimes you have holes in cups and you don't know where they came from. So keep a damp paper towel just to wipe your fingers off and try to avoid as many messes as possible. So now this Liquitex Prism Violet, I'm going to stir it up and when you stir you always scrape the sides of your cups and you stir it up really, really well. You can even scrape your stick a few times so that nothing is sticking to your stick and not getting mixed into the mixture. And that is on the thick side. And when I say thick, you see how thick it is on my stick. And uh, it, it lands in a mound on top of the surface of the paint. So I do want to add a little bit of my water with Floetrol mixed in. I'm just going to put a little squirt in, stir, and then check the consistency. It's still thick. It's still landing in a mound on top of my paint. So I'm going to add another squirt. That's just a bit thick. I'm going to add one more squirt. So I don't do a big squirt at once. I do it in smaller squirts so that you can uh, kind of judge the thickness because if you add too much water, then you have to go back and add your paint back to it or something to thicken it back up. And the deal is, is you always mix your paint and Floetrol together first so that they bind together first and then you add water at the end. So, I think that's about the perfect consistency. It's a little, a little thicker, but it's, it's kind of landing on top and kind of disappearing pretty easily. So that's about good right there. All right, so this is the Josanya's Lavender. It was a two paint, but it kind of came out more on the thinner side. So I'm going to totally scrape around the edges, make sure I'm getting all the mixture, scrape my stick a few times, really make sure it's mixed in good. And that, that consistency is perfect. It lands on the surface and it just kind of sinks in. The consistency I tell people to aim for is melted honey or warm, melted ice cream or warm honey. Okay, let's do the uh, Deco Art, which is the craft bottle paint mixed with the Floetrol. And sometimes metallics are heavier, so you have to kind of just, you have to feel the consistency. Scrape the edges as always, scrape your stick a few times so it really gets mixed in well, and then pour. And if it, if it lands in the paint and it kind of dissipates and it kind of goes away, then you're really, really good. That's perfect right there. This is the Floetrol where I put more Floetrol in and just a little squirt of the teal. And I can promise you that this won't probably need any water. 
scrape the sides. Perfect consistency. That's the beauty of flow trolls. It typically is, it makes for a perfect consistency unless you're doing tube paint and then you add your little pinch of water. Okay, and now I've got my titanium white. And this one was a tube paint. It was Amsterdam acrylic tube paint. I'm going to add more flow trawl with this one because it's on the thicker side and the white can be kind of thinned out a bit. Typically I use Artist Loft white that comes in a quart from Michaels, but I'm on purpose I'm using Amsterdam titanium white today because I'm just wanting to experiment and see how it does with these other standard fluid art pieces, uh, art colors. See how it does with these other acrylic colors. Scrape your stick, scrape around the edges. It's pretty good. I'm just going to put one little dash of water on that one. All right. So that's pretty perfect right there. I'm trying to decide if I want to add one more color. I think I will. I'm going to do Thalo Metallic Green by Artist Loft. It's a two paint. So squeeze it in there. And you're going to put your flow trawl as much as your paint. You don't have to measure, but at least as much, or you can do more. You can always go over on the flow trawl and it will not affect it at all in the least in a negative way. You can always go a little bit more on the flow trawl if you feel like you need to. Scrape the sides, scrape the stick, go back to stirring. Okay, this is two paint and it's metallic, which means it's going to be thicker. So I'm going to add a squirt of water. Add a little bit more. And because the water is coming out kind of a milky, like it almost looks like skim milk, like watered down milk, that's the way it's supposed to look because it's water with flow troll in it. Scrape the sides real well. Scrape the stick. Check the consistency and it's perfect. It lands on the paint surface and it just sinks right in which is a perfect consistency. Okay, yeah. I wanted two shades of this teal blue green color. I've got the Rich Espresso, two shades of purple and a little bit of white. So I'm pretty much ready to try my colors out. So I'm going to do these two 8x10s and there is a chart that tells you how much ounces you need for the surface of a particular size canvas. So the chart says for an 8x10 you need 3 ounces, but if you want to cover the sides you're going to need at least 4 ounces. So I'm just going to go ahead and use my 5 ounce cups. And the first one I'm going to do, I'm not going to put any silicone in it, and I'm going to do a tree ring pour. Then I'm going to do the second one with silicone or OGX in it and show you the cells that happen. But this one I'm not going to add any to it. I want to do just the um, just the paint itself. So with the tree ring pour, we're going to pour like we would a soft drink or a beer. If you don't want foam, you kind of pour down the side of the cup.
like to do when I'm doing uh, a layered cup like this where you're pouring in in layers you're layering one color over another I like to do a contrast type situation where there's some contrast between the colors so I use the lighter purple the deeper purple white then I'm going to do the metallic green the teal the beautiful rich espresso that's metallic and then I'll go back to the light purple and I'm not going to put as much this time I'm just going to put a few more layers the deeper purple a bit of white a little bit of the deep green when you get up to the top you don't have to pour it down the side of the cup it'll kind of land on top anyway and end with the beautiful rich espresso okay so my cup is pretty much full and with the tree ring pour you just pour in the center and you let it pour out slowly you can even move it a little bit one way come back another way go another way and then you can come back to center you can with tree ring pours you can kind of do whatever directions you want to do you can move your hand a little bit or you can just totally leave it still and it's going to give this tree ringed effect and then I use my finger to stop the paint from dripping out of the cup so there is a tree ring pour with no added silicone or OGX for cells I have a new heat torch it was a gift for Christmas so immediately it's going to get paint on it but anyway did that just to pop air bubbles now we're going to tilt so I just like to uh, kind of with the tree ring I like to kind of circle it around a bit on the canvas and just kind of get it mostly to the edges and then I put my hand in the corner to kind of make a dam to keep that paint from really totally going off the edges of the canvas I'm going to come back over here I love that violet purple color that's beautiful and then I'm going to bring it back down this is a pretty boring corner here I'm going to tilt off some of that and bring it back to the center a bit and then come to the final corner and I'm holding my canvas from underneath not from the sides because if you hold on the sides you're going to mess up the edges which are really quite beautiful and then I'm just going to kind of tilt back until I find it in a place that I really like the design and I kind of like that I like that big chunk of violet but I can also let it drift back a bit and cover some of that chunk so you can kind of totally shift things around to get different effects I guess I'll take some of that violet off the corner but then I'm gonna tilt it back to bring it back in just a bit and I do like that one corner here it's really pretty and vivid 
with that uh, phthalo green that's metallic. Okay, so I got some dirty hands and I just dripped on my canvas. That's another thing about fluid art is be cognizant of the fact that you've got something under your hands on the table, whatever. Just be cognizant of that. Don't you can't turn your canvas sideways to look at it because if you do, you're going to lose your whole design that's on there because it's very fluid and it moves. That's quite pretty though. The other thing you want to do is check your corners and edges just to make sure that it's fully covered and if you're missing a spot just stick your finger into paint color that is similar to the area that you're missing paint and that way it will look like it was meant to be and always lift it from underneath the canvas. The whole reason for the push pins is to give you some space to put your fingers under and lift your canvas up and do not hold it on the sides. So I think this one is going to be called done. Add a little bit of paint here in the corner and I'm going to move it to the table to dry. So you can see the drips on the table. If I let this dry, this will make some really pretty jewelry. I'm going to bring my other canvas over, which has a drip on it, which is okay. I'm going to not worry about that. So this one is going to be a dirty pour and I'm going to add either silicone or OGX to the paint. The reason for that is it makes big cells and this one is going to look totally different from the last one. And my preference is OGX. OGX is the, a brand and it's called Coconut Milk Anti-Breakage Hair Serum. It is a very specific hair product. You cannot use just any coconut milk hair product. The very first ingredient in this is dimethicone and that is the magic ingredient. And when you press down, you will get at least a teaspoon of product when you press down, which you do not need that much for your colors. You only need one little drop. So what I do is I purchased a little dropper bottle at Hobby Lobby and I poured some of this OGX into my dropper bottle. So this is what I'm going to use to put my OGX into my colors. Okay, so I'm going to take my dropper and move the canvas here for a minute. Bring my colors over here so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to put one little drop in each cup. It doesn't matter if I have one ounce of paint in there or eight ounces or 12 ounces. I just use one drop. So one part ratio of flow trial to paint. Water is your variable sometimes. One drop of OGX in your color if you want cells. Then you're going to stir it just a few times. It doesn't take much stirring. You're just basically mixing that hair product into the paint. All right. I did not add any in the white. You don't need it in all the colors. You can always leave it out of one or two of the colors. I usually leave it out of white or black, my neutrals. So um, I left it out of the white. I put it in the rest of the colors. Now we're going to take our little five ounce cup and this is what you call a dirty pour. And what a dirty pour is, is you pour one color in and you pour the next color right into it and they immediately go into each other and sink into each other, then it's called a dirty pour, quote unquote. So I'm going to start with just a pinch of white. And I think I'll go into this beautiful violet color. And I'll do, and see I'm pouring from up high so it kind of sinks down in there. Now I'm going to do the bronze rich espresso color. I'll do this light teal. I'll do this beautiful phthalo uh, metallic color. So I'm pouring it and it's just going into each other. And this is a dirty pour. 
Okay, I'm going to add another little dip of white. And then I'm going to go back through the colors. So I'm going to start with the deep purple. The amethyst. And if you get to the end of the cup, just scrape it out. This time I'm going to put the bronzy rich espresso in. Put that beautiful teal color next to it. And the green metallic and let it just totally sink in there. And maybe just a pinch of white and that's it. Okay, so those colors totally sunk in. This is a dirty pour. I'm going to take my canvas. I can totally flip it over really fast or if you want to control it a little bit more, you can put your cup down underneath, hold it with your other hand, very easily turn it over. Put your canvas down on the table. The, un the other thing you can do, and you can't use this cup again after you do this, is you can poke a few holes. That releases air pressure so that the paint does not stick to the bottom of your cup. And then you just release and you pull away and you have all these pretty little colors mixed together. Going to heat it real fast just to get air bubbles out. This does not cause cells. This doesn't make the cells. The cells happens from the chemical reaction of the paint with the OGX hair product. Or if you were using silicone. The reason I typically don't use silicone as much anymore is because the silicone leaves more of a residue at the end of the day. Um, the silicone you usually use a drop per ounce of paint mixture, so you're using more silicone than you do OGX. But you can actually just sit and let this sit for five minutes or so and just kind of watch the cells grow. So I'm going to let it sit. You can even blow. You can blow with your breath and that will pop bubbles. So you don't even have to have a heat torch to pop the bubbles. You can also use a heat gun if you want to. Okay, I've let it sit for about five minutes or so. And now I'm just going to tilt. And I think I'm going to go this way first. I sometimes use my hand to help paint go over the edge. That way you don't lose so much that just flows off. It's 
So there's a dirty pour and you see the difference in the look overall that you achieve. I'm going to totally blow this a little bit. Just to create a little bit more of an interesting pattern. You have, if you have longer hair, you have to you know, be aware of that and make sure you don't get it in your paint, which I have been known to do. <clears throat> that just gave it a little bit more interest. But that is a dirty pour. And it's got beautiful metallics in it that you may not be able to see. You may be able to in the, uh, the espresso color and the deeper phthalo green. All right, so we finished the basics video using two paint, craft bottle paint, golden fluid paint, um, and different brands of two paint because they're all different thicknesses and consistencies. We used a one-to-one -one ratio of paint to Floetrol, and then if you need to add water, or if you want to add a little more Floetrol, you can, but it's a one-to-one -one ratio to begin with, and then you aim for the perfect consistency of melted ice cream or warm honey. The first one was a tree ring pour with no silicone or OGX. The second one had OGX in it, which made the cells. And um, now I have my puppy pad, and it's got all these pretty little colors that when they dry, it may turn into something beautiful for jewelry. And that will be another video. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Check out all the links below the video where it says show more on your laptop or the down arrow on your mobile device. I have my Amazon link and lots of other links. I have a Thinkific platform where I teach acrylic painting with brushes for those that want to learn to paint. So check out all the links and if you haven't subscribed, please do. If you want to get notifications, click on the bell in the bottom right and you will get notifications when I post a new video. Thank you so much and I'll see you on the next one. Have a great day. Bye-bye.